single bit of these by x minus 3, kind of clear it out a bit. So then you have f of x equals uh, q of x, let's do uh, x minus 3 times q of x. So it'll be x minus 3 times q of x plus 8, right? Because the x minus 3 would cancel out that one, come to this one, cancel out that. And so now you notice that interesting things are happening when x is 3, right? So if x were 3, then this would be 3 minus 3 times q of x plus 8. And 3 minus 3 is just 0, so 0 times anything is 0, plus 8 is still 8. So you know when x is 3, f of x is 8. So when x is 3, y is 8, and therefore the graph should contain the point 3, 8. And basically this is um, our remainder theorem. And I wrote it out this way just because it's easier for me to see this way, but it, this is a standard form as well. This is when you take f of x and divide it by x minus 3, you get some quotient plus some remainder, right? And uh, we know, if we look at our other choices, that x, f of x can't have a 0 when x is 3, because if you divided f of x, if, if 3 were a 0, when you divided f of x by uh, the factor x minus 3, then you would get a perfect result, and you wouldn't have this remainder bit. If the remainder was 0, this would be true, if this part weren't, weren't here. Um, this, yeah. So that's, it's our remainder theorem at play. It's pretty cool. So that's why when you take any function and you do that synthetic division, that remainder is actually your graph. So, uh, yeah, so when you're doing that rational root theorem and you're testing points, not only are you figuring out whether they're zeros or not, you're actually plotting out points on the graph. We kind of tend to forget about that when we're doing it. So, yes, our remainder theorem. Um, and the rest of the two, these two don't make any sense, so this is just straight up remainder.